My name is Bramis, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. As for this last video that dissects some practical use cases of scroll-driven animations, I'm turning towards something more hacky. Detecting the active scroll speed and directionality of scroll using scroll-driven animations. Detecting this allows you to style an element based on whether the user is scrolling or not scrolling, the direction they are scrolling in, and the speed they are scrolling with, and this all using only CSS. Crazy? Maybe. Impossible? No. Now, before I continue, let's be clear about it up front. What follows is a CSS hack. It combines a few CSS features in a rather complicated way to make it all work. The code you're about to see is not the most performant and definitely not the most elegant, so be warned. The first component that's needed are two custom properties that get animated on scroll. This is done using a scroll timeline, which is declared on the root element. Both these values will animate from 0 to 1 as you scroll the document from top to bottom using a regular scroll timeline on the root element. Because these properties are registered to add property, they will interpolate nicely instead of animating discreetly. Go check out the link shown on screen to learn more about add property. Testing this in the browser, this here is the outcome. As you scroll, the numbers change. Animating two different properties in exactly the same way seems a bit stupid, but that's where the rest of this trick comes into play. By delaying the scroll position delayed property on the child of the scroller, you can have it lag on the parent. This is achieved using the transition delay property. It's important to note that I'm delaying the scroll position delayed property on the body element, which is a child of the HTML element. This parent child relationship is a requirement for this trick to work. The parent element immediately updates the values, but the child delays that update unto itself. Checking things out in the browser, you can see that it works. The numbers lag a bit on each other. Because the computed values of the scroll position and scroll position delayed properties differ as you scroll, you can use them to calculate the scroll velocity. By taking the difference of both values using a regular calc, you end up with a number that represents the scroll velocity. In CSS, it looks like this. The resulting number is one of these. Zero, indicating that the user is not scrolling. A positive number, indicating that the user is scrolling down, or a negative number, indicating that the user is scrolling up. Checking in the browser again, you see this number gets calculated properly indeed. When idle, the number is zero. When I scroll down, the number is greater than zero, and when I scroll up, the number is less than zero. When looking really close, you might notice that the number is a bit off when quickly changing the direction or when abruptly stopping a scroll. The updated value of scroll velocity does not immediately reflect the actual state. This can be tweaked by tightening the transition delay of the scroll position delayed property. But then you end up with a smaller value for the scroll velocity, so you might need a multiplier to counteract that. Yeah, I warned you before, this is hacky. Because velocity is a measured speed into a certain direction, it's possible to extract the direction and the speed from that velocity. The direction of scrolling can be derived from the scroll velocity custom property by looking at its sign. If it's positive, then the user is scrolling down. If it's negative, the user is scrolling up. Extracting the scroll speed from the velocity is also easy to do, as it's a matter of dropping the sign from the value. In CSS, you can use the sign function to calculate the direction and the apps function to get the speed. Put together, you get this. While the scroll velocity holds both the direction and the speed, the two new calculated properties only reflect one of these aspects. At the time of recording this, Sign and Apps are only available in Chrome after you flip on the experimental web platform features feature flag through Chrome flags. Thankfully, the functionality can be polyfilled using some basic mathematics as detailed by Anna Tudor in this post on CSS tricks. With these computed custom properties, scroll velocity, scroll direction, and scroll speed available, it's time to get creative. The first demo here is one where the boxes get skewed in a certain angle depending on the scroll velocity. 
The faster you scroll, the more skewed they get, with a maximum of 25 degrees. Furthermore, the boxes also get the hue of their background color rotated depending on the scroll direction. The CSS code is nothing but computations that use the calculated custom properties. Cranking it up a notch is this demo that blurs and desaturates the content as you scroll. The faster you scroll, the more blurry and desaturated the content gets. This is all handled by the filter property. Some basic translation and opacity matting also takes place to give it a rather cinematic effect. To always have a positive float value for use within these calculations, the code relies on the scroll speed instead of the scroll velocity. Furthermore, the entire photo strip gets skewed a tiny bit while scrolling, similar to the previous demo. If you rather use style queries to style things, that's possible. While this only allows you to style child elements, your code becomes a bit easier to read and you can use values that don't consist of numbers or calculations. Note that for this to work properly, you need to do an extra custom property registration. If you want to learn more about style queries, go check out the link shown on screen. Thanks to some more basic mathematics, it's possible to end up with a value of 1 in various scroll cases. For example, if you take the absolute value of scroll direction, which is either minus 1, 0 or 1, you end up with a value of 1 only when the user is scrolling. Furthermore, if you take that calculation and subtract 1 from it and make the result absolute, you end up with a value of 1 only when the user is not scrolling. Mix and match basic mathematics, apps, min, max, clamp, and you can end up with a value of 1 in any of these situations. When the user is scrolling up or down. When not scrolling. When only scrolling up. When only scrolling down. When scrolling up or idling, and so on. Now, you don't need to know these calculations by heart, as you can copy-paste them from one demo to the other. Check out this here for example, where the header and footer bar move out of the way as you scroll. Or take this demo, that adjusts the scale x value of the little chiclet as it runs across the screen. There's a lot more you can build based on the scroll direction and scroll speed. This demo here for example is a more fully fledged one. Besides skewing the text based on the scroll velocity, it also dynamically adjusts a clip path based on the scroll position. Go check out the source to see how it's done. Or this variant from the reading indicator I covered in one of the first videos of this series. Using the delayed scroll position, the reading indicator becomes a bit more dynamic. I'm curious to see what you can come up with. Leave a comment below or reach out to me on social media. And oh, don't go just yet. We've got one more video to go in this series. See you there.